welcome to Just Jesus with Jules. That's me trying to be the professional. <laughs> that's, that's my clapper right there. Uh, we talk about life. We break down the scripture. I do my best to encourage you. And you don't have to be a Christian to watch my videos. But if Jesus speaks to you, don't fight it. <laughs> I have on my episode today don't fight it. the wonderful Joyce Pring. Yes. Woo. Nobody claps. Come on, guys. Woo. Guys, I know we don't pay you, but a little more enthusiasm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Like we do. <laughs> Our topic today is something that I feel all Christians kind of have a struggle with sometimes. They're figuring out how to do that, especially when we're talking to people who we think or we see might need to know a little bit more about Jesus. They might need to know that they're loved, that they're accepted, but that there is a certain part to God and to his kingdom that they're just not very aware of yeah. yet, okay? And we call that the good news or the gospel. So today we're gonna be talking about just how do you share the gospel with your family and friends? Or tips, or just your own experiences, or advice. Mm -hmm. Have you had this, Joyce? I've had this struggle for the longest time. And yes. I say struggle because there are seasons when it's so easy to share your faith and your love for Christ and yeah. to just tell, tell people straight up that, hey, you know, Jesus loves you and you should just follow him and, you know, give your life to him. Exactly. It's, there are seasons when it's so easy. And then there's also seasons that are like, this is the gospel track. Here's the gospel track. God loves you, Paul. God loves you, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Which, is, which is sometimes what I have with my with my like Uber Grab drivers, you know, which I've experienced. Yeah. So I think it's really such a struggle when you aren't completely surrendering and focusing your eyes on Jesus. Yes. It starts becoming a struggle in that sense because you start considering the other person, which you have to the man, but you start focusing too much on the person that you're trying to share the gospel to. So yes. when you forget that the thing that you're doing is specifically for the glory of God and not just for the salvation of the person in front of you, yep. then you kind of get derailed. Yeah. So it's it's like, that's the thing that, that, that I get a problem with because it's a people pleaser. Ko. So True. I ko nang Ayoko ma offend yung tao or baka am I taking too much of this person's time? Yeah, I always have that. Struggle. Yeah, I feel like the first thing that you have to do is whenever you have a conversation is you don't go into the conversation with the thought, okay, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to break down the gospel and then we're going to do the acceptance <laughs> prayer and then they're going to you know accept Jesus into their lives. Like, well, you know what I mean? After, exactly, group, exactly. You know? I feel number one, you have to find a point of relation. So yeah. just have a conversation with the person. Don't force it. Don't think that something has to come out of the first conversation. It could be in the second or the third that it actually comes up. But using your testimony is number one, a really good point of relation because people are gonna ask about your life or what's new about you, what's changed about you. And therefore you can kind of go into it and say, well, basically I love Jesus and, and he changed me. Yeah, so that's a common question that I get these days because I used to be the super WhatsApp person, like so <laughs> brang. Part of the WhatsApp team, yeah. WhatsApp team for life. Yes, not anymore. Not anymore. So Saved and redeemed. Oh, Saved and redeemed. Okay. So being sanctified. There like you go. Jesus. Yeah. Um. But so people would would see all of these big changes in my life, and yeah. you know, I I think I've been kind of vocal also about my faith on social media. Yeah. So a lot of people ask about it, but one thing that I really see in other Christians also, brothers and sisters in Christ, who I adore, is that they live their lives in such a way that people can't stop, can't help but ask. Yep. Like this, these people love so much, yep. they serve so well, they are so kind, they're so encouraging that even if they don't start talking about the Bible or even if they don't start talking about Jesus first, ikaw na mapapatanungin na, Teka, what's different? Ano bang, oh, oh, ano bang mayroon sa'yo? Oh, oh. Diba? Or what is exactly that you're doing with your life that makes you this way, you know? And it makes you joyful. It makes you joyful. Yeah. You, they see you and they, you have so much peace. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they could actually see a storm around you, but yet you're just there, just kind of standing there confidently. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that that's obviously like a number one, you know, that's just how you segue into it. Yeah. And that's how you just, you naturally share it because when people see it in your life, I was, about to, I was about to go to that, is sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Yeah. It just shows, like the fruit of the Holy Spirit just shows in your life. And when people ask you, that's how you can kind of open up and say like, okay, well, this is, this is Jesus. Yeah. You know, and um, I think another one there is that you don't necessarily have to get the person to agree with you. This is true. You know, because what, what will happen is you, you might encounter different religions, you might encounter different beliefs, and they'll be like, yeah, I get what you're saying, and that's good for you. That's, yeah. that's a statement that I always get, like, ah, I'm happy for you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, good for you. This is my favorite line that I've encountered so many times. 
I'm so happy that you found your truth. <laughs> Because, because there are so many truths, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> truth is relative na lang eh. No, but um, when, you, when you say something, it's not to get the person's agreement, but it's basically just to put it out there. Yes. And you reinforce love and understanding more than getting that person's agreement. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you undersell what you're saying because you just say the truth. Yeah. Like we know that there is an absolute truth and that absolute truth is that Jesus Christ came, died, resurrected and, and is the giver of salvation. And when you say that truth, you can't undersell it. But at the same time, I think we, we have to be wary because I've actually been in conversations with other Christians where I'm just like, dude, moment's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the topic's done, yeah. the topic left in that exit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, let's just, let's just close it up and let's not try to force the person yeah. to get on our team yet or to get where we're standing or yeah. where our understanding is you of the gospel. You have to understand also that people come from different kinds of backgrounds yeah. and you know, they handle certain situations differently. So they might not agree with you at that time. They might, you know, forever. But there are also times when just you have that conversation and they're like after but hmm, let me let me just think about that. yes one of the things that i really loved um from my my favorite christian apologist see ravi zacharias he oh, said he's that a man. truth not undergirded by love makes the truth para repellent and the the speaker of it arrogant i think something like that yes something like that so yes if your truth is not undergirded by love then the person hearing it will think that that truth is just arrogant and so are you yeah so you always yeah. have to undergird it with love and when you talk about your testimony and when you talk about the truth para it's just easier to really let that other person be yeah and just lay out just lay it out there, lay it out there. However they receive it is not up to you anymore because it's not our job to save people. That's God's job. Yes, He uses us and we are vessels in that moment. And of course we pray about it and we're like, Lord, you know, speak through me right now and, and open this person's eyes, open this person's heart. But like I said, we can't force that. We can't make them see things the way that we see it. So sometimes we just have to, like you said, undergird it with love, speak the truth, don't undersell it, but you yeah. say it in such a way that you're not attacking the other person right. and you're not reinforcing that what you're what you're saying is right we know that it's right we know that it's the truth um, but there's a way to just gracefully do it and to just yeah. gradually slide out of that topic as much as possible because like you said they're gonna be thinking about it later yeah. on it's definitely something that they're gonna be pondering on yeah and I think uh, one thing that really changed the way so I started reading this book um, prayer by Tim Keller nice it's amazing it's yeah. an amazing book and it, it just hit me in such a way that I, for the longest time whenever I try to share the gospel I'm always going in there hot yeah I'm gonna go in here this conversation and this person's gonna like, Jesus. I'm gonna traverse the yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna na navigate my way through it there, yeah. yeah. But usually when I start into conversations thinking that way, I always get into trouble or but I'm yeah. never it never rolls. So one thing that I changed really is every time I want to share the gospel to someone or every time I get into a conversation or whenever I wake up, I always just pray na Lord send them a begin mo ka ng chance today to share the gospel. Amen. Or, give like, me an opportunity. Lord, yeah. Give me an opportunity to yeah. share the gospel, to share your love with this person. Or when you get into a car with a new person, like with, with your driver or something, but just, Lord, just give me an opportunity to really just share. And whenever, I, like, walang palya. Every yeah. single time I pray that prayer, biglang, the person pa will be the one to open the conversation. There you go. They'll As be the one to ask the questions. Yeah. My, my gym instructor, Yesterday, when I woke up, I was just, okay, I'm going to go see Coach Adam today. And, and I prayed, Lord, I, I hope that that will be glorified today. I hope that yeah. I'll be able to give me an opportunity to share yeah. the gospel. And literally, this guy, after we work out, you know the first thing that he told me? Yeah. You know, Joyce, I watched the Passion of the Christ before I was playing basketball. Kahap. Okay. <laughs> random, but okay. That is so random. Yeah. And it's just like, what a prompting of the Holy Spirit. There you, you go. You pray for this yeah. person that you are given up an opportunity to share the gospel. And then God is the one to move that yeah. for you. The same thing happened to me like when I was in New York because I was talking to the, the guy who was like hosting because I was at an Airbnb, right? And so we had some conversations every now and then when he would slip in and say hi. And um, he, you know, he asked me about my background and everything. And then I think like, I don't know if it was my tattoo or it was like my necklace. And he's just like, oh, are you a Christian? And like right automatically, you know, okay, this is, this is where this happens. I think that 
if you go in with the intent that like, okay, I'm going to share the gospel, most of the time, nine out of 10 times, it doesn't happen yeah, the way you yeah. want it to. But the times where you're just kind of caught by surprise or like you said, it's prompted, it's the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that's when it just naturally flows. Um, and I think lastly, like out of, out of everything that you've said and done and everything that you've given to that person in that conversation, you have to, don't go or leave feeling like you're defeated because yeah. maybe that person argued with you or maybe yeah. that person disagreed or was just like not buying what you're selling. You have to understand that there's good soil, there's bad soil sometimes, soil that's not ready yet. And also it's our job to plant seeds. Yeah. Sometimes another person will come along and they'll water that seed, but ultimately it's God who grows. Ultimately it's God who comes into that person's heart Amen. and shakes things yeah. up. So yeah. It's so great to always remember that we serve a sovereign God. And it's his plan. Everything is under his plan yep. and control. And his everything will. Everything will be under his will and his supply. So the only thing that you can do is really do your duty with yeah. the light. Yeah. And then wait for the Lord to move. Yeah. And just get in deep with the word. Get in deep with your prayer. And I think that in any conversation that you come across with a person, it will flow naturally. You won't even have to do anything because it's there. Mm -hmm. It's there in your spirit. It's there in your core already. So it's just, it's a natural flow. Yes. Last thing go. before we go. Yes. I think one thing that I struggle with also is um, I give my, myself such a hard time whenever I'm not able to share the gospel or whenever I don't have the compassion to share the gospel. Yeah. Um, and I think when you feel that way, when you feel like you don't have this, which you should always have, like a passion for the lost souls, whenever you don't have that, you have to backtrack and go back to your relationship with God. Because I've realized that that always happens to me and I'm sure to a lot of other people too, that I don't have a compassion for other people because my compassion for Jesus is wildering. Right? Yeah. It's wildering. Right? Yeah. So, you know, just don't be discouraged when that happens. It just means that you really have to spend more time praying. You there really you have go. To spend more time with your Bible in communion with God yes. before you can even think of sharing the love with other people. Basically, you have to fill up your spiritual tank. Yes. And that's how you get the gas and the fuel to keep going, to keep loving on people, and to keep sharing the good news. So, there you go. Just some tips, just some experiences Yay. from me and Joyce on sharing the gospel. We hope that that was helpful. Please subscribe to this page. Subscribe to Joyce page as well we're cross collaborating which means that you're appearing on mine yes. and I'm appearing on yours watch out for our videos. so watch out for our videos thanks guys God bless